Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. I hope you had a great Monday. Today I'm going to read a story that might sound familiar um, to one that you have read before. So I'm reading from Grimm's Fairy Tales and the story I'm reading in it is called The Hare and the Hedgehog. The Hare and the Hedgehog. Some of y'all have probably read The Hare and the Tortoise. So today I want you to pay close attention to what the lesson or moral of the story is. It was a beautiful Sunday morning at harvest time. The buckwheat was blooming and the sun was shining brightly overhead. The warm breezes were playing over the smiling fields. The bees were busy among the flowers and the people in their Sunday best were on their way to church. Everybody and everything was happy. The hedgehog was happy too. This hedgehog was standing in the doorway of his little house his arms folded on his stomach, enjoying the pleasant Sunday morning. As he stood thus, he hummed a bit of a tune. Not a good tune, but not a bad one either. It was no better or worse, in fact, than the tunes all hedgehogs were accustomed to hum on a perfect Sunday morning. In the midst of his humming, it suddenly occurred to the hedgehog that while his wife was washing and dressing the children, he might take a walk to see how his turnips were getting along. The hedgehog called them his turnips, but they were his only because they grew in the field next to his house. As the hedgehog and his family often helped themselves to the turnips, they had quite naturally begun to regard the turnip patch as theirs. From thinking to doing was the work of a moment. The hedgehog closed the door and went down the road to the turnip field. He had not gone far when he came upon his neighbor, the hare doing exactly the same thing, except that the hare's interest was in cabbages, not in turnips. The hedgehog, a good-natured fellow, gave the hare a cheery good morning, but the hare fancied himself a gentleman of importance. He looked at the hedgehog haughtily and did not return the friendly greeting. Instead, he said scornfully, what brings you out in the field so early in the morning? I'm take I am taking a walk, said the hedgehog. A walk, sneered the hare. Can't you put your legs to better use? Hmm. There they are down there. Now this made the hedgehog very angry. His crooked legs had been given him by been given him by nature, it is true. Nevertheless, he did not like anyone to mention them or to make remarks about them. So he said to the hare, Do you think you can do more with your legs than I can with mine? I certainly do, said the hare proudly. That can easily be proved, said the hedgehog. I'm sure if we were to run a race, I would be the winner. The hare thought this was ridiculous. The hedgehog should be taught a lesson for even daring to suggest such a thing. So he agreed to race against him. What shall we wager, he asked. A gold piece and a bottle of wine, said the hedgehog. Done, cried the hare. Let's start at once. Oh, there's no hurry, said the hedgehog. I haven't had my breakfast yet. Suppose I go home first, have a bite to eat, and meet you in a half an hour. The hare didn't mind, so the hedgehog hurried home. On the way, he wondered how he might outwit the hare. He's long on legs, he thought, but short on brains. He thinks he is a great fellow, but he's really a ninny, and I'll make sure I'll make him pay for this, his insults. When he reached home, the hedgehog said to his wife, hurry, drop everything and come with me. What are you up to now? asked his wife. I've wagered the hare a gold piece and a bottle of wine that I will beat him in a race. The hedgehog told her, mercy on us, exclaimed his wife. Have you taken leave of your senses? How can you possibly win against the hare with his long, swift legs? Woman, cried the hedgehog, don't try to understand the affairs of men. This business doesn't concern you. Just do as I say. So what could the wife do but obey? Without another word, she went out with her husband. On the way to the field, the hedgehog said, Listen carefully to what I'm going to tell you. I also suggest to the hare that we run our race in the long field. He will run in one furrow and I in the other. Now, I want you to stay quietly at the bottom of my furrow, and when the hare arrives at the end, you must get up and cry out, Here I already am! When 
they got to the field, the hedgehog showed his wife her place, and then he joined the hare. Are you ready? asked the hare. Ready, said the hedgehog. Then the hare said the hare, one, two, three, and off we go. Like a flash of lightning, the hare streaked off. The hedgehog made, ran a few paces, crouched low in his furrow, and remained there. When the hare, puffing like a locomotive, arrived at the end of the furrow, the hedgehog's wife popped up in the other furrow and exclaimed, Here I am already! The hare couldn't believe his eyes and his ears, for of course, as the hedgehog's wife looked exactly like her husband, he had no doubt but that it was the hedgehog who stood where, stood there talking to him. He couldn't understand how it had happened. There must be some mistake, he thought, and aloud he said, A return match. We must have a return match. Let's run again. The hedgehog was willing. Once again, the hare went off like the wind, but the hedgehog's wife remained quietly in her place. When the hare reached the top of the furrow, the hedgehog himself jumped up and called out, Here I am already. It's not fair. It's not fair, ragged the hare. Let's try again. As often as you wish, the hedgehog replied. So the hare raced again and again, and each time when he reached the top or bottom of the furrow, the hedgehog was already there ahead of him. In all, the hare ran against the hedgehog 73 times, but at the 74th time, his strength gave out. He couldn't even finish the last run, but dropped down exhausted in the middle of the furrow. There they are. See the wife, the husband, and the hare. The hedgehog collected the gold piece and the bottle of wine and his wife and went home. No doubt he is still living there beside the turnip patch in great content. And since that time, no hare has ever run against a race, ran, run a race against a hedgehog. So there are two morals to this story, and the last paragraph of this book tells them, but I do not want to read that because I want you guys to come up with um, one of them and put that on the discussion board. So one of them has to do between the relationship of the hedgehog and his wife, and the other has to do with the relationship between the hare and the hedgehog. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later.